Hello everyone, today we will learn all about magnetism. I am very excited to acquire the knowledge about this magical phenomenon. So, let's get started. For thousands of years, mankind have been knowledgeable of magnets and magnetism. Ancient people were intrigued by the magnetic rocks that were discovered in Magnesia, which is today a region of western Turkey. When people first discovered magnetic rocks, it's possible that they noticed that some of these rocks were more magnetically drawn to iron or other magnetic rocks than other portions. The poles of a magnet are these regions. A magnet's magnetic pole is the area that attracts other magnets or magnetic materials, such as iron, with the greatest force. The earliest records are from Asia Minor, specifically from a place called Magnesia, which is where words like maglet first appeared. People were able to distinguish between the north and south poles of any magnet thanks to the finding that one particular magnet's pole faces northward, while the other faces south. Then it was discovered that the south and north poles of two separate magnets act similarly to repel one another. The south pole of other magnet is drawn to the north pole of one magnet in the opposite direction. Similar to how electric charges resist and attract one another, so does this circumstance. Simply substituting pole for charge makes magnets behave as follows. Opposite poles attract, while like poles repel. Only a few substances, including iron, cobalt, nickel, and gadolinium, have powerful magnetic properties. After the Latin term ferrum for iron, these substances are referred to as ferromagnetic. Other materials show faint magnetic effects that can only be seen by highly sensitive equipment. These materials are weakly attracted to magnets and include aluminum, gold, and copper. A permanent magnet is a substance that continues to exhibit magnetic properties over time, even when subjected to demagnetizing processes. In addition to having a strong magnetic response, or being attracted to magnets in the same manner that iron is, ferromagnetic materials can also be magnetized, or converted into permanent magnets. The material with unlike poles closest to the magnet, becomes locally magnetized when a magnet is brought close to a previously unmagnetized ferromagnetic material. Unmagnetized iron is drawn to a magnet as a result of the resulting attractive force. On the other hand, if there is no other magnet nearby, a permanent magnet can be demagnetized by receiving a forceful blow or by being heated. The orientation and size of the domains can be disturbed and randomized by increased thermal motion at high temperatures. The the precise temperature above which ferromagnetic materials cannot be magnetized is known as the Curie temperature. Iron has a Curie temperature of 1043 Ek, 770 degrees centigrade, which is significantly higher than the room temperature. Numerous elements and alloys only become ferromagnetic below Curie temperatures that are significantly lower than room temperature. What happens when a bar magnet is sliced in half? Get one magnet with two south poles and one with two north poles, respectively. The short answer is no. The bar magnet contains two poles, one on each half. Even after repeatedly cutting the bar magnet in half, you will always end up with a new smaller magnet that has two opposite poles. Continue this procedure all the way down to the atomic level, and you will discover that even the tiniest particles that behave as magnets have two opposed poles. From the tiniest subatomic particles like electrons to the biggest cosmic objects like stars, no experiment has ever discovered an object with a single magnetic pole. Magnets are referred to as magnetic dipoles, because they always have two poles, the prefix di stands for two. That is all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe with bell icon in order to learn easy through animation.